Hey, good Monday night. I've got an awesome episode for you today. We're going to be running a proxy by using Amazon's EC2 instances. That is free if you create an account on Amazon Web Services. And I just picked it up from a tutorial I found online and I thought I'd share it with you. So first of all, if you don't already have one, you're going to need an Amazon Web Services account. Um, they don't have a really good login button so you have to click sign in alright and then you can click on EC2 and what you want to do is essentially run a server on a virtual private cloud so after you make your Amazon Web Services account and ask you for your credit card number and all that good info uh, you want to choose where you live closest and I'm just going to choose North Virginia. So I'm going to check my geography on that. Launch an instance. This one doesn't really matter. Um, what they're asking you to choose here is what operating system you want your, your foreign um, server to be running. And I like Ubuntu, so I'm just going to choose that one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, okay. I don't care about any of this, but I do care about the security groups. All right, so this is something that uh, is important for your proxy server, or at least for you to access it. Because right now, anybody can pretty much secure shell into it. They need a password file, but pretty much anyone can come in and try to uh, ding your server as long as it's open on the web. So let's not have that as open. I'm just going to select my IP. As you can see my location here, please don't hack me. Add any rule. Okay, so I'm going to add a custom TCP rule. And this is going to be, we can specify an arbitrary port. I'm going to put 8888. And once again, my IP. So this is how we're going to be reaching it. The first rule states, hey, we're going to be using a protocol called Secure Shell which essentially allows us to enter the terminal of this remote of this remote uh, server and this one is basically like hey this is another port that we can use alright let's just launch this okay right here if you don't already have one you're gonna have to create a new key pair and then give it a name or whatever and then download it and keep it in a safe place and don't tell anybody about it. I already did all that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they want you to make sure that you do have it. Now I do have a copy saved, so I'm just going to check this box and launch it. All right, and they will bill you if you're not careful. Just be careful and don't exceed the RAM usage that they provide or the online time, which I won't. You know, they give you a lot for a tiny instance. Alright, so it's just setting up here. Alright, cool, it's running. And if you like, you can actually give it a name. Let's call it Programmation... No, no. Programmable Proxy. Cool. Alright, it's still initializing right here. And I'm going to give it a second. Alright, so when we're secure shelling into this, when we're accessing this uh, server located somewhere in North Virginia, you know, don't be a dummy like I am and try to craft your own secure shell uh, command. It's really not that hard, but they, they actually give it to you right here, and you can just copy and paste that. Alright, so I'm going to jump into terminal, find out wh where did you save uh, your password. Uh, I put it right here and obviously just go to wherever location you found it in. Okay, and I pasted that secure shell command. Now I'm going to access this, which is pretty sweet. I am running Ubuntu on a remote server. That's my name. I'm no longer Kitty. And uh, yeah, so let's install Tiny Proxy, which is the next part of this tutorial. I'm going to use the package manager on Ubuntu, which is apt and install tiny proxy 
It's rather lightweight, so you don't really have to worry about it. Alright, there's nothing in my home folder. Let's go into Etsy. This is where you'll find Tiny Proxy. Alright, so let's go ahead and f locate that actually. Tiny. Let's see if it's here. Okay, so I was searching for tinyproxy.conf, and that's actually what you're going to want. Alright, so open up your favorite text editor. It can be nano, but I am cool, so I'm choosing Vim. Now, it doesn't matter really where you put this. Uh, port 888, remember this is what we, were, we specified earlier, um, and this is what they're using. So somewhere at the end of the file, you're going to want to do this. Allow, you're going to want to allow your public IP address. So I don't actually know mine. What's my IP address? You know, just ask Google, like, you stupid. Put this in here. There we go. And now this will basically look at your IP address from your home and be like, oh, so I'm supposed to listen to this. Save the file. And we also want to start it. And where it's located is etsy init.d. A uh, tiny proxy and just run start. Hmm, should be good to go. I don't like that background. <clears throat> so I'm going to open up the manual page for Secure Shell and introduce a new concept here. Uh, TAC L is the command that we're looking for. Alright, so in Secure Shell, there is this command that we're going to want to use. And we're basically, what, what it's going to do, as it specifies here, is we tell it a local socket, which in our case would be like 3,000 something. And that's what we tell our operating system, our, our browser to connect to. And then we have host, which is going to be localhost, what we run it through on our computer. And then we put our host port name, which as we specified is our remote 8888 you know it's what we what we specified in the very beginning is able to talk to our VPC on our virtual private cloud so we're essentially going to rerun our secure show command well we can log out of here we don't need our Ubuntu instance live anymore well and we're going to re-log into it but with this port forwarding command on our SSH so Let's take a look at what that actually looks like. Um, again, don't be dumb. Just use this thing. Wait, I didn't actually want that to hit enter. That is, okay, that's unfortunate. Um, so you want to keep this tag. You want. You definitely want your password file. But what I was supposed to show you was dash l. Um, and our local socket, our host, our host, and our host port. So, yeah, let's just come up with any local socket. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, local host. Remember this, by the way. You're gonna need this. Local host, the name of our our host computer, and host port, which was eight 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 eight. And this is not looking good. Can I do that? Alright, cool, cool. So this sets up port forwarding for us and while we're secure shelled again. Now that's not all. The part that we have to do is kind of acquaint our operating system with it. Um, and you can go into Google Chrome and be like proxy. It depends on what browser you're using, obviously. But if you click on change proxy settings, it detects you're on macOS and it's all like, okay, we're going to do that. So by default, you're not going to have any of these connected. Uh, but what I did while I was practicing is you're going to want to use secure web proxy, HTTPS, don't need a password, localhost, and your port. You have to hit OK. Please also 
hit apply. I wasted so much time. I didn't hit apply. Just, just you know, macOS. Why do you hate me? Now, if we go to what's my IP address? Ah, it's changed. Wonderful. So our proxy is working. It used to be a 24 something something, but now it's different, and that is a good result. Thanks for watching, by the way.